Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and we're gonna be starting the solo playthrough of Fireteam Zero. I'm really excited about this one. We've had this set up for a little bit and already gone through the solo setup as well as the rules overview. So next up is going to be the operation briefing, which is gonna give us a little bit of a rundown on what exactly is happening in this mission. So I'm gonna give you just a few, maybe about a minute to listen to this operation briefing. And then we're gonna run into the mission briefing afterwards. So here we go. The following is the operation briefing for Titan's children. At 15.30 on the 9th of July, Lieutenant Marcus Tambier returned to friendly lines after his Horsa glider failed to reach its objective, the Pontegrand Bridge spanning the Ennepo River in Italy. The lieutenant claims that 11 men survived the crash but was subsequently attacked and killed by unknown combatants prior to rescue. When found, Lieutenant Tambier was in possession of an animal carcass which he claimed was responsible for the deaths of 10 armed and alert soldiers. Division Zero intercepted the report and acquired the carcass for study, noting several telltale deformities that they believe indicate the presence of an active and aggressive supernatural artifact. Aerial reconnaissance has determined that the likely location of the artifact is the village of Baluka near the bridge. Fire Team Zero is to locate and neutralize the artifact before it can contaminate the region. All right, so that is the operation briefing for Typhoon's children, or Typhon's children, as I should mispronounce it. So we're actually going into the mission briefing now. So we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit with the mission briefing. This should be really cool. This will give us a little bit of a backstory too. So this mission briefing actually is very specific to Abe, and Abe is actually this individual right here with a shotgun, and you can see that by taking a look at his card over here, it says Abe Sarge Griffin, and so that's uh, the main character. And actually in the books that I'm reading, Bad Radio, as well as uh, Liar's Harvest, uh, he is one of the main characters throughout those books. Uh, so again, we're gonna go over top of this one right here, mission briefing. So it says Abe's log. It says, looks like we're not going to be using the bridge. Operation Ladbrook was complete. It was a complete bust, which was a surprise to exactly nobody. They packed 2,000 men and a bunch of green pilots into gliders and threw them at a bridge in the middle of the night. Most of them crashed or wound up drowning their crews at sea. Point Grand Bridge is now under the control of the 75th Nepali Infantry Regiment, rendering it unusable for our mission. Scuttlebutt is that the Royal Scouts fuselers are on their way or sorry, the Royal Scots fuselers are on the way, but we don't have time to wait for them to tidy up the bridge for us. There's a civilian ferry terminal about 12 miles down river, so that'll have to do. If we push hard, we'll arrive just before dawn. So the mission goal here at the very bottom says, cross the Annapolis River using the designated ferry. So our main objective is just to get to this particular location, which is our exit, but not only just to get there, we also have to satisfy our objective cards, which we talked about in the rules overview and the setup. So I'm gonna close this up and we'll talk about the after effect. If we happen to actually pass the mission, we'll read that after report as well, which will be really cool. Uh, but these two cards right here, we're gonna keep right close to us because these are gonna talk about the actual objectives that we're supposed to be covering in this mission. So the first one is to acquire specimen samples. So. This says, if we don't figure out what we're up against and fast, we're dead. That means Henry needs some monster corpses to dissect. They will need to be fresh and in one piece. So precision is key. So in other words, we need three Intel tokens on this objective to complete it. And how we get Intel tokens is specified right here in the bottom paragraph. It says, if a monster is killed in Henry's location by an attack inflicting no more than one excess damage, place an Intel token on this card. So we need Harry, who is this individual right here, and we'll show, I'll show you his miniature as well. This is his card right here. So this is Harry the Professor. We need to have him in the same spot as a enemy or as some type of monster. And if we kill that monster without inflicting more than just one excess damage, in other words, we do enough damage to kill it, but not enough to destroy its corpse, then Henry is able to acquire some specimen samples from it and we can gain one Intel token of the three that we need. We'll have to do that three times and then we complete this objective and when we're good to go. So this one's one we want to keep out and about. I'll just leave it right on the board because we're gonna to want to keep in mind that that's an important thing to go after. The other one's a little bit tougher. This one's called repair the ferry. So we need to get across that river, of course. And, but the ferry isn't gonna go anywhere like this. So someone must have been working on it when things went to hell because the propeller is missing. And if that weren't enough, the gas tank is flat empty. So we're gonna have to also try to figure out where this the parts are essentially to this particular ferry. And if you remember from when we set up the recon deck in the last video, this deck right over here, 
we have two discovery cards in that deck and those two discovery cards will give us the two uh, intel that we need and how we get those uh, recon cards in the first place is by searching all these locations so we're trying to find those fairy parts essentially i want believe one's a propeller and the other's gas so we got to find those two things and then we're good to go so again, two things to keep in mind. For now, I'll actually leave them on the board because we're not really worried about anyone spawning in these two areas right now. Uh, and later on, we'll, we'll have to reshuffle them around the board as we see fit. But just in terms of keeping them up close so we don't forget what we're doing. All right, so let's move right into the very first turn. So on the very first turn, you always go ahead and you, you first off, you skip uh, what you're doing in terms of the determining the first player because you've already gone ahead and chosen a first player with this. And our first player is gonna be Abe, who we already talked about having the shotgun. So he's gonna be the very first player that we use. The second thing that you do is play a tactical card if you want to. Uh, it's optional, but it's always skipped in the first round, and we're going to definitely skip it on this round uh, because the game forces you to. You don't get, you're not allowed to do it on the first round. So we're going to go right to drawing action cards. And as you can see, if I pan over here to my decks, I've already pulled the five cards for each of the characters. So I've got all five right here. They're already drawn, so we're good to go. So we're going to start right off in the hero phase, actually. So the tactics phase was very quick, and we jump right past it, right into the hero phase. And now we're going to be doing uh, in clockwise order each player. May they move and perform one of the following actions. So this is where it gets really fun. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and start with our first player who is Abe. We'll grab his cards. We know what he's capable of doing. We're going to take a quick review of what he's got. So he has three of the pump action attacks as well as some reactions. Now the really cool thing about this game is you might look and say, hey, there's three cards here that are exactly the same. They're not. If you actually take a look at the text in the reaction column, there is a difference, and each one of these can be played for its reaction on the bottom as well, as long as you're playing it within the game rules, and it'll tell you when you can play it. So this one states, you know, before a minion does something, this one, same thing, and but you can tell the text is different, so the effect is different. Same thing over here, before an ally performs something, you can actually increase their attack strength. So that's all well and good. Good things to keep in mind for reactions, but I just want to give you an idea of what Abe has in hand. He's also got a couple knuckle dusters, so he's also got the ability to attack up close, which is always good because uh, in, a, in a game like this, you want to get up close and personal with somebody. So these are going to come in handy as well with a couple handy uh, reactions as well on him. So what are we going to do? Well, we, we got to come up with what our best plan of action is going to be, and we want to inflict some damage. And we also want to get Henry involved in these kills. Now, Henry has to be in the same spot as an enemy in order for us to get the chance to get those intel tokens on those uh, specimens we're going after. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to put Henry, and this is going to be a little dicey, but I'm going to take Henry, and what we're going to do is the very first thing you can do is you can always choose to move and then do an action. You can uh, attack, do your action first and then move, or you can break up your movement. I'm going to choose to actually have Abe move right into the zone with these two enemies. It sounds insane, but while he does it, you can also bring in a specialist or one or more. So I'm gonna have Henry, our specialist, who matches this particular card, I'm gonna have him come in with Abe. And the reason for that is so if Abe happens to kill one of these specimens, that Henry's there to potentially gather the corpse that we need in order to get that acquired samples. Uh, and we need three of them anyway. So we got a lot of work to do. The other thing that's really cool is you'll notice there's an effect here on the specialist. So it says if you are within range one of this specialist, you may reroll one attack die when you perform an attack. So I'm gonna get an extra reroll because I am within one. The other cool thing is, is we also are close by to another specialist who's next to us called Patrick. And Patrick actually has another ability that says if you're within uh, range one of the specialists, you may perform a search action. We don't have to use that right now, but just good to keep in mind. So I'm gonna flip this one over because we don't really need to worry about it just now. We'll keep the Henry one there just for reference. And really, I've done my movement. So just so you guys are aware in terms of how much this movement costs, if we started here and we're moving into difficult terrain with symbol here, with this orange symbol, this is gonna cost two movement, which is all we have as base level movement. But we are allowed to bring our a number of specialists with us as many as we want. Uh, and I'm choosing to bring Henry in for reasons I've already explained. So. Let's get going and see what we can do. Oh my goodness, I'm just chucking Dawn to the ground there. Okay, so we've got everybody in there. Now we're gonna make an attack. So what do we wanna do? Do we wanna go for using maybe melee in order to kill them? Or do we wanna go with bullets? Well, the first thing you wanna take a quick look at is the actual enemy you're attacking. In my case, it's a corrupted animal. You'll notice there he's got some resistances. So he's got a resistance right here uh, that says one for the fist and one for the bullet. Maybe a little difficult to see in the light there, so I do apologize for that. So I'll just bring it up so you guys can see it clearly. 
but it says one fist and one bullet, and then the grenades, he's not resistant to at all. So really, no matter what I do with um, Abe's attacks, he's gonna be able to resist at least one of them. Now, in a perfect world, we're gonna want to do no more than four damage. We'd wanna do one, two to kill it, one to get, pa or one to get past his resistance, two to kill it, or, and one extra, and then as long as we do that, we have enough to um, take it as a specimen, or if we just clean kill it at three, we also get to take it as a specimen. So we just wanna see how we can make that happen. So what I'm gonna probably do is I wanna keep the most cards as possible in my hand when I do this without messing up. So I'm gonna keep all the pump actions for later. So that keeps me with three cards in my hand in case Abe needs help later, cause he's gonna be in a spot where if he fails his attack, he's gonna need some help later on to be able to take some damage. So he's gonna keep three cards. He's gonna use two knuckle duster cards, which are gonna allow him at, this, at a range of zero to roll four dice. We're gonna take those four dice and they're gonna be these white ones right here and we're looking for fists in order to make that melee attack. We're gonna to total up the number of fists and go from there. So I'm really hoping that I can land some good attacks here and not go over. All right, we got, oh, we went way too far. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we overkill that to the nines. Um, and on top of that, we have Henry's ability that says, if you are within range one of the specialists, you may reroll one attack die. You know what? I'm gonna reroll one because I have a chance to actually decrease how many fists I get. I already know I can kill it, uh, but I'd rather not overkill it. So right now I've got four right there. If I can roll and not land fists, we did it. Oh, I got a fist. Okay, so I ended up getting one, two, three, four, five. So I ended up uh, basically punching the thing so badly with my brass knuckles that I just dismantled it. So obviously Abe's got some anger issues and he just decided to just hammer the heck out of this uh, corrupted animal. And uh, I guess Henry's just gonna be a little bit angry that he wasn't able to take that as a specimen. The two cards that I used for Abe are gonna be discarded. So we'll check them off to the side for now. And then that is that. I have no more movement to do and that was my action. So I am done now with that turn. So now we're gonna come over here and look at Dawn's cards. So Dawn's a totally different layout, totally different type of character. And this is interesting because Dawn has uh, the ability to do different things. So Dawn has things like, actually he's got quite a bit of different cards. So he's got two cards that are similar. Satchel charges, which are extremely powerful as you can see, lets you roll five dice. So if you're really going after big target items or enemies, these are the cards you wanna use but he's really a fan of chucking dynamite. That's his thing. The crazy thing about dynamite, you have to remember in the rules that we didn't talk about the rules overview, is it literally hits everybody, heroes and monsters in that spot. And it's, so that attack I made melee only hit, only goes after one monster and won't trickle over and kill off the second monster. Whereas if, you, if I used a grenade and threw it into this spot right now, it would be hitting every single living thing in that spot, which is, can be devastating, especially if you have your own characters in here. The only person it won't hit with a grenade is your specialist. Your specialist wouldn't get hit by grenades. Okay, so we have to think about how we wanna do this. Now we do have some melee stuff, so we could run in there and do some concussive devices we could use, or we could do a haymaker to try to kill the other one. So two dice for fists is a little weak. I probably would wanna use the three, I think would be the best. Do we have any reactions we can use? We do have tactics. So this is the first time you're seeing tactics cards that we talked with at the beginning of the rounds. These are the cards you can play. This is like the in the tactics phase, which is right here. It says right here in the second one, play a tactical response. And we skipped this in the first round, but I'll just mention it now. So one player may play a tactical response. The reason you can only play one in a round, which we'll do later in other rounds, is because they're super powerful. It'll even say it, kill up to four minions in elites anywhere on the battlefield, or all other heroes may draw up to a hand size of seven. They're really powerful, but they really handicap that particular hero going forward, and they're not allowed to draw up to their hand size of five. So there is a downside there. You have to be prepared when you're using those. Anyway, let's get past that because we're not using those right now. And let's move towards thinking about how we're gonna knock off this last enemy here in our spot. So I'm thinking movement first. So let's have, uh, let's have Dawn head into the same space as everybody else and stuff like that. Um, and then we're gonna also maybe bring our specialists with him just to keep all of them together. So we've got all the specialists and everybody, everybody's kind of dogpiling in there. Uh, so what are we gonna do here in terms of an attack? Well, we didn't wanna use our satchels. So we're not gonna go ahead and use this uh, right now. We don't wanna use the high X. Uh, the concussive device might be the perfect one. So I'm gonna go ahead with a concussive device. I'm gonna keep four cards for Dawn because that'll, allow him to block a lot of damage if we run into trouble. So this is gonna allow me to roll three melee dice. And remember, I get that reroll thanks to Henry and his very helpful ability. So at this point, we're just hoping for nothing too, too devastating. 
Uh, oh, geez, that actually wasn't good at all. So uh, I got one fist and a whole bunch of grenades, so nothing, but I'd get that one reroll from Henry, so I'm gonna take that reroll. And I failed again. So I only ended up getting one fist, guys. So the bad thing about this is that that one fist, you, in this game, if you, like, it obviously was resisted by the one uh, fist resistance that this particular uh, enemy has. So really nothing got through. But regardless, even if damage had gotten through, it's not like other games where you put, like, a damage marker on the individual. If you don't kill it outright, you don't kill it. It just stays there and haunts you. So now we've got to worry about this monster because I just expended my second hero's actions trying to kill it and failed. Now this card will be discarded. So we're going to move off to our last character in play, which is going to be uh, Frank. And Frank's going to have to take a look at his cards and see what he can do. I'm putting myself in a tougher spot now because we got this guy right here. So what are we going to do here? Um... I've got a couple options. So grenades are not a good option because they're gonna hurt everybody that's already in there. I need to get in there with melee. Uh, so it's possible my bayonet could do it. I do want to guarantee that I actually kill them. This would be a little bit of overkill, but I might have to do it because I can't risk I can't risk not killing it. I don't want it to be in there to hurt me. So I'm gonna go ahead and play bayonet for two attacks. So it's gonna be a six attack. So it's gonna be a lot of dice. This is gonna be likely a massive overkill. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how the dice end up turning out. I got that reroll as well. So before we do this, of course, we actually have to move our character in there. So we're going to move him in. And uh, we're going to roll. See what happens. All right, we got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, interesting. So we actually didn't get tons. Now, in order to kill it, if I kept these three fists, this would kill him. Because he resists one. Two, the other two will be enough to kill it. I'm gonna to try to re-roll this one so that we don't get fists and maybe we can use it as a specimen. Ah, we got it, grenades. So we actually succeeded. So in our attack, we did three fists. So thankfully, uh, Frank was able to hold back. He's a, he's a marksman. He's more about a long range shooter than anything else, but he was able to hold back. He punched the thing to pieces, but left enough of a specimen so that, um, we can actually collect something. So if I go to my objectives here, it says, if a monster is killed in Henry's location by an attack inflicting no more than one excess damage, and we definitely were fine there, place an intel token on this card. Awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and take an intel token. We're gonna just slap this right in here, and we've got one of our uh, specimens already, uh, already done. That's great news. All right, uh, we were able to clear up the whole area there, so that's safe, feel much safer over there. And the other thing just to note is when there's no enemies in this area and we're all here, we've secured this location. So now no spawns can potentially happen at 12. They still can happen at 10 or two, but at least we've got a little bit of distance there, so that's good. Okay, so now let's take our um, two cards that we used for Frank, discard them, and move forward into what is likely to be a nasty enemy turn. So then the hero's turn is done, we move to the threat phase. So the threat phase is advancing the threat token, so the threat token will move up the track to two. That's it. Uh, of course, if we had to hit the draw first twist, then twist cards would come up, but we're okay there. And then we're going to go ahead and activate monsters. So each monster, you activate each monster in turn, beginning with minions and ending with a boss. So you move a monster, uh, you roll their activation die, resolve the monster's attack. So you activate each monster in turn. So we're just, we can do this in any order we choose. So um, we might as well go ahead and activate this guy here because he's right here. Uh, so he's going to move Henry for a second. So he's going to essentially uh, move based on his movement, which we've talked about in the past, is two right there next to the symbol. And he's got an attack of two looking for bullets with two dice. So he's going to move two, which is going to get him in here. He also doesn't care about difficult terrain. He runs right through it because he's a nasty individual. Now he's in here with our squad. And he's gonna roll two white dice to go after us. Now before he does this, he's done his movement, he's gonna roll his activation die, which could potentially give him some type of buff or bonus. It was just movement. He doesn't need any more movement. He's already inside there with us. So now it's really nasty. We'll take our two white dice. We're gonna take our tray and we're gonna roll to see how this pans out. And I'm really hoping that he doesn't do too much damage. Now the other thing you do before you roll in this situation is normally the target would be attacking the individual who went first. So Abe would be the target of the attack, which is him right here. However, I can choose to throw another individual in front of him. I can choose to have one of my other heroes say, no, I'll take the damage. I'll jump in front of the enemy and take it. So what I'm thinking is maybe I'll have Dawn do it. I can't remember who it was. Yeah, Dawn has four cards to trash. So I'm gonna have Dawn jump in front instead and hope that that's a wise decision. So Don's gonna take the brunt of this instead of Abe so that I have a little buff to make sure that he doesn't get knocked over. And 
Oh, wow. It was, it, I mean, it's bad, but it could have been, it would have been all of Abe's cards because we got three, sorry, it's bullets. Never mind. We're, we were going for bullets on this. This is fantastic. So I only lose one. That's amazing. So I'm only losing one card. So I just have to go into my hand here and discard one card. So I'm going to take, uh, at this point, for distance, nothing's close to us. So I'm going to toss the Haymaker. I think the long distance cards is what I want to keep on me. So, and again, I'm not looking at reactions too much right now. We'll talk about those in future videos and maybe use them more often. But for the first one, I thought I'd just explain a regular turn. So that's that monster. These monsters will not activate. So this guy over here, he can move two. You can move across diagonals like this, which is insane. So he can go one and then he can go two. So he's on his way to us. He then can roll the green die to find out what else happens. He gets this right here, which gives him on his card says, attack range is increased by one. Thank goodness he's just too far to reach to hit us. So he doesn't do anything more. This guy's gonna activate now, trying to go the shortest distance. So one, two, three, four, five, six, or maybe one, two, three, four, five. So they're probably going through this way. So he's gonna go one and then two possibly. Roll his dice for activation. He got nothing, so that's good. So he's gonna stay at four. And then we've got this guy way over here uh, who's going to do his movement of two. So we'll go one and then two. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this die, roll it. And he actually got this, so he gets an attack of range one. Doesn't matter, he's too far away. Great news, so too far away to do anything. Now the next step after all that happens is we spawn. So we spawn the two individuals that we killed. So we're gonna roll dice and put them back in the map, yikes. So the first one's landing at three. Please tell me, oh good, three is way over here in the corner. So he's coming out of the corner of the board. That's wonderful, nowhere near me. And then 12, that please, oh, we got lucky. So this is great news. So look at this, 12, we have 12 secured. It cannot be here because of this, we can re-roll this. That's a good thing. Four. Where does four put them? Ah, gross. It's right over here. So we got two of them over here. So they're they're coming in. They're coming in hot. There's three of them coming from the north. So as of right now, strategically, in terms of which way we're going, uh, one thing I want to make note of, because at this point now, we are done the first round. We've done the entire sequence of play. And in the next videos that I do, I will speed things up, not talk as much or explain as much. I'll just start doing it quicker. Uh, I'll talk about it as we go through like I always do, but I just won't uh, you know, go into the nitty gritty as much as I did in this episode. But just so you guys know, in terms of uh, strategy, uh, I've heard people say this one's a tough one because there's not many walls to hide behind. So some of the strategies are to hide to the wall, like to stay stick to the walls so that the monsters have to kind of come to you. If you go up the middle, you're kind of, you're asking for it a little bit. Uh, the other thing is there's elevated cover over here that gives us an advantage on tacking with an extra dice. Or if we're in here, we actually, they, the ranged attacks would be reduced by one die. But a lot of these guys are not ranged unless they roll that really cool uh, trophy symbol uh, for these particular corrupted animals. But anyway, that's all part of the tactics, part of the coolness of the game. So that's the first round, guys. Hope you got, enjoyed it. Again, in the future videos, we'll talk a little bit more about maybe using reaction cards, which can happen. You can play these at any time as long as they match the wording on the card in order to help your allies with their, with their moves and their attacks and strategies. So we'll do that a little bit in the next round. But this is just the first round to show you that, hey, we can survive. We made it one spot we actually got an intel on our objective. So hope you guys are enjoying it. Give me a like if you like what you've seen. And if you saw anything that I missed, please let me know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, you're, in the very, you're new here, you've never seen anything here, or maybe you've been here for a while and just never subscribed, definitely jump in with us. It's great. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks again for watching. Keep on rolling solo.